Yes. All right. So now that we are talking about randomness and pseudo randomness, now we have to check what is a random value. So uh, since we are going to generate uh, zeros and ones in a and the length will be a finite length, so we have to have a way of checking if it is a random or not. Okay. So let's start with Golomb's randomness postulates. These are very basic definitions. And uh, before uh, seeing this Golomb's three postulates, let's give some definitions first. Okay, so this is a definition of a run. A run in a binary sequence is defined as a set of consecutive zeros or ones. So here's an example. If there are many zeros like this, this is a single run. And also this is a single run of ones. The length is in this case six, in this case four, but it is a run, okay? Autocorrelation is actually checking the sequence with itself. So assume that you have a sequence A of n bits. So this would be a binary sequence of length n. Autocorrelation CI is actually A XOR with A rotated I bits to the left. So this is your autocorrelation, so CI. So if you check this correlation for every I, then you will check the autocorrelation function. And actually, yeah, this is the definition. Autocorrelation function C tau of a binary sequence A1 to AP is defined as follows. Okay, here I use the index N. So I hope it is not uh, confusing, but here you are actually uh, rotating A, the sequence tau bits and XORing itself and summing all of these bits. So since this is an XOR operation, the result is either zero or one, right? But this summation is on integers. So you are actually summing P values. So at most you can have P at the end. And since you are dividing with one over P, the result can be one, all right? Otherwise it will be less than one. So tau is a phase shift of sequence AN and C tau measures the amount of similarity between the sequence and its phase shift. So with tau, for instance, equals to three, you are actually checking the similarity of the sequence itself and three bits rotated version of it, okay? So with this definition, now I can actually describe what Golomb's postulate is. And in order to understand why we are checking this, we I have to talk about pseudo randomness. Only infinite length sequences can be random. That is actually coming from the definition of random. But we call a finite length sequence pseudo random if it looks random. This is the main idea. Okay. So Golan's randomness postulates as follows are as follows. The first one is number of ones and zeros should differ by at most one. The second one is half the runs should have length one. One fourth of the run should have length two, one eighth of the run should have length three, and so on and so forth. Of course, if the uh, run, if the sequence is not very long, then you have to stop at some point like here or here. Finally, autocorrelation function should be two valued. Okay, now let's see some examples to understand what this means. Okay, so let's look at the sequence. This sequence has seven bits. I chose something very short to you know easily see what is going on. So let's look at the first postulate. So there are four zeros in this sequence and there are three ones in this sequence. So if you look at the difference, it is one. And Golomb's first postulate says that number of ones and zeros should differ by at most one. So this means that actually if, the, uh, if your sequence is, has a length of an even number, then ones and sh zeros should be equal. But if it is an odd number, then uh, the difference should be one. This is why it says that it should differ at most by one, okay? So if we had five zeros and two ones, then it wouldn't satisfy the first postulate. So this satisfies the first postulate. Let's look at the second one. So we actually have this sequence. Now I divide it into runs, okay? So this is a run of zeros. This is a run of one. Only one bit, this is a run of zero, and this is run of ones, which has length two. So we have four runs in total. Two of them has length one, one of them has length two, and one of them has length three. So recall the definition. It says that uh, half of the runs should have length one. You know, 
one fourth of the runs should have length two and one eighth of the runs should have length three. So we should have uh, two runs of length one, one run of length two, and you know this is uh, not an integer one over two, but we say it's close to one. So we say that we should have a, a one run of length three. Okay, so it satisfies the second postulate again because we have two runs of length one, one run of length two, and one run of length three. So it is equal to these values. Okay. So let's look at the autocorrelation. Uh, what I do is as follows. I take the sequence. So if you rotate zero bits, it is the sequence itself. If you rotated one bit, everything you know shifted to left one bit and so on and so forth. So this is your phase shift. And if you exhort these values with the sequence itself, of course, if you don't rotate it, exhorting it with S provides you all zeros. But now you rotate it one bit and exhort it with S, you obtain a different sequence, different sequence, and so on and so forth. So now uh, this autocorrelation function definition actually means that uh, some all of these values, since we have zero summing of, with zero give you is an you know identity element. So we are actually counting the number of ones. Here we have four ones. But the length is seven, so the autocorrelation value is four divided by seven. Again, again, again. So you see that we have four divided by sevens here. Of course, you have to have zero here because you know you are uh, exhorting the sequence with itself. This is why we said that uh, a random value should have autocorrelation of two values. Here we have two values, zeros and four over sevens. So if we had three over seven here, then it wouldn't satisfy the third postulate. Okay, so these are the you know definitions to just uh, you know satisfy a random sequence should satisfy these properties. We have finite length sequences, or we want to check if it satisfies these postulates. So if it doesn't satisfy, we will say that you know it doesn't look random. That's it. So these three postulates are very basic stuff but now uh, and it is not enough of course you know a long sequence most probably will satisfy all of this but of course uh, if you write a sequence from your mind by using your hand most probably it will fail these postulates because human mind generally doesn't generate wrong runs, runs. but recall that here we are saying that uh, in the third postulate okay where is it yeah Sorry, the second poster says that, you know, one eight of runs should have length three and, you know, one eighteenth of runs should have length four. And if you uh, have 16 runs and if you doesn't generate it by a random number generated by, if you write it by hand, people don't like to, you know, uh, write the same bit four or five times consecutively. So this is actually what professors do most of the time, you know, they ask you to uh, generate a sequence either by hand or by random number generator. And just by looking at it, we can say that if it is generated by you or the computer, because human generated values don't have long runs. Okay, this is how you actually check Golan's postulates. Okay, so let's talk about testing randomness. Various statistical tests can be applied to a sequence to attempt to compare and evaluate the sequence to a truly random sequence. Randomness is a probabilistic property. That is, the properties of a random sequence can be characterized and described in terms of probability. So we have uh, two NIST documents. One of them is for entropy. Uh, source checking so this is a special publication 800-90b so this is recommendation for the entropy sources used for random bit generation so it starts with health tests in health tests actually you run the device and uh, produce bits you know you turn it off turn it on and this kind of tests so if it passes these tests this means that machine is functioning normally under these conditions 
Then uh, this document has 11 tests checking IID assumption because when you generate zeros and ones, you as expect it to be uh, independent and identically distributed, right? So this is what these tests check first. If you pass all of these tests, then the this document gives you some uh, different tests to calculate entropy. So you have nine uh, estimators here. All of them estimate the entropy of the sequence, but the document says that just use the minimum value of one of the result of these nine tests. And with this, you provide say that this uh, entropy source has this amount of entropy. Uh, it is a uh, actually a nice thing and you can uh, implement all of these uh, algorithms that is defined in this document and you know you can have an entropy estimator. This is for the entropy source. You know we then use this source to maybe combine it with a different method and produce random numbers, right? At that point you can check the randomness using again special publication this time 822. This is a, a uh, named as, uh, we simply call this statistical test suite, but this documentation has the name, a statistical test suite for random and pseudo random number generators for cryptographic applications, okay? So it has 15 tests, for instance, in the frequency test, it just checks the number of zeros and ones and compare it. And you know, if the gap is too large, it will say that it fails from this test, but if they are somewhat close, you will pass this test. So idea is to generate uh, maybe thousands of random numbers from your random number generator, then put it into all of these tests. And if it passed in maybe 95% of the time, you will say that this random number generator acts in a random way. But this is not saying that it is truly random. Just don't forget that. I can always take AES, put a counter as input and choose a secret key, which I don't tell you start encrypting all of these counters, obtain ciphertext, and I can give you the output to you as a key stream and say that my random number generator works like this. You can put it to any test you want, it will pass all of these tests. So this doesn't mean that passing this test is uh, saying that it is truly random because this way I can easily put a backdoor, right? I can choose a secret key, encrypt counters with the secret key, and I can give the output to you as a random number, but I actually know which random number you are going to generate. So I can do forward prediction, right? I can also do backtracking. So this test only to detect uh, bad cases, okay? If you can find bad versions, I mean, if you fail this test, we conclude that your random number generator is a bad one. But if it passed this test, we only say that it may be random, okay? Just don't confuse this thing. So aside from NIST, there are other test suites. For instance, CryptX has eight tests. DieHard has 15 tests. DieHard 26. TestU01 has 18 tests. And uh, you can have more tests if you want. In the next example, I will show you how to you know, define a statistical test and how it works. But uh, having hundreds of tests does, sometimes doesn't mean anything. You only need to have tests which check in different properties. For instance, if we go back, this test actually checks the frequency. So it checks the you know, number of zeros and ones. In this test, it divides the input into blocks and checks the frequency of those blocks. So these are two different tests, both of them looking at the frequency, but in a different manner. But sometimes, you know, we have Mara's universal statistical test, which I'm going to talk about next. This actually tries to check the entropy of this uh, output and so on and so forth. So in our university, we had a group for uh, statistical uh, randomness test suite. And we, in the past, many different groups actually uh, produce many different software for checking this. So we named it as Sadist and we actually have many variants, but uh, actually our, some of our variants, I find it better than this test suite. Okay. So you can always define your own randomness tests and apply it to the, any sequence of uh, zeros and ones and check if it is random looking or not. <clears throat> 